here about exactly a year ago. It was actually the first time I uh, came to Singapore. Um, I've since moved mm -hmm. uh, my life to Singapore. I'm very excited about that. Um, one of the reasons, so by the way, I'm Jose from Vice, just in case, uh, so hopefully that's clear. Um, one of the reasons why Vice came is to find interesting things to do in this part of the world that we're not able to do or, you know, in, in the rest of the world, if you will, and find different companies that do interesting stuff in surprising ways that people don't know in the rest of the world yet. Obviously, that's about to change in a massive way. And Gojek is this example that I always hold up, right? I, I, whenever I go back to New York, I'm like, you know, there's this company, Gojek, they're totally insane, they're amazing, they do incredible stuff. So I'm very excited to talk to Chris about all the stuff we're doing together because mm -hmm. it's uh, some of the stuff I've talked about again a year ago, um, launching our studio business, which we'll talk about, and, and again, working with great companies here, so. Yeah, and our timing was kind of um, almost synchronized because I left Singapore to go down to right. Jakarta to work for Gojek just as you were arriving. Um, I remember when we first met. Um, and I started in the branded side of Gojek, so helping tell the Gojek story, right? What, what is the impact, particularly the social impact mission of Gojek, kind of as their chief storyteller. And then meeting Vice Indonesia, Mo Morris and his team down there, uh, we began talking about ways that we could potentially work together um, and put together a, a pilot, uh, like a pilot slate. There were things that I needed to learn being new to Indonesia and there were things that, you know, Vice already knew and it seemed a really good, uh, you know, first step in a partnership. So we put together a, a, a slate of, you know, five territories, um, talking about food, talking about pop culture, talking about, um, you know, kind of the indomitable uh, Indonesian spirit and using athletics as, uh, as, the, as the talking point. Um, super well received in the market. We tested them across uh, Vice's YouTube, our YouTube, just to get a sense of the storytelling, a sense of the territory we were working on. And we actually have a clip, a little sizzle. Magic. A magic. I don't know if you want to. <laughs> Somebody kept calling me just for the past two minutes. I was nervous. I'm not supposed to say anything, but it was a delivery person. Anyway. Um, so, yeah, so, so Underdogs was, was a really amazing kind of first project between, between the companies right. because we were, able to, um, we were able to work really closely together in finding interesting stories, mostly from an individual athletic point of view. Um, you're in a country that doesn't necessarily support individual athletes in the way that other countries are. You don't necessarily have world-class competition around you driving you forward, and yet the spirit of the Indonesian athlete continues to drive them towards, you know, how do you get to the world stage? And that's, that's what Underdog's underlying kind of theme is. Yeah, and, and I think we'll talk about this more, of course, but uh, those type of themes work globally. Mm. Right? It's not a specific theme to Indonesia, although the stories are, um, but obviously they're very connective to everyone around the world, which is exciting. Yep. So, you know, I came, as I said, you know, uh, probably talked about our studio business, Vice Studios, is our big push into scripted, into long form, into, into films we're making uh, for all sorts of uh, exciting companies around the world. Um, and we'll talk about a little bit what you and I uh, or our companies are doing together at this point. So some of the, the films we haven't really publicly talked about much that we're doing in uh, the rest of the world by studios is a film uh, called Torture Report. Uh, I mentioned to you is a Steve Soderbergh film that stars uh, John Hamm, uh, Adam Driver, and Annette Bening. Right. Uh, we're putting out Harmony Corinne's new film called The Beach Bum, which I'm super excited about coming out in March. Trailers uh, just came uh, out on that. 
uh, with uh, Snoop Dogg and Matthew McConaughey uh, and a bunch of other people. We just uh, showed uh, uh, Jeff Goldblum's next film, mm -hmm. um, The Mountain, uh, just last week in Venice, uh, and Gaspar Noé Climax, uh, his new film, yep. right? And you sort of get a sense of the type of directors, the type of range of, of, of films we're working with and, and talent we're looking after. And there's some, uh, you know, again, why I'm so excited about this partnership, there's, there's one very specific person that we're working on uh, with in Indonesia that I think uh, fits right next to uh, Harmony Corinne, Gaspar Noé, yep. Jonas Ackerland, and those type of directors that we're working with in the, in the rest of the world, and of course, Spike Jones being a part uh, of the studio as well, and then, ta-ta. I'll let you talk about uh, who it is what we're working about, what we're working on. Yeah, on so we're one. working, um, we started the discussion quite a few months ago with uh, Joko Anwar. So Joko, um, quite celebrated Indonesian writer, um, director, has numerous, you know, both commercial but also kind of art house or festival um, darlings that he's put together. Um, and via, via the relationship with Vice, we were all able to sit down at the table, go through some script readings, and right. actually pick. We, it was like, I was super grateful to be at that table because he really gave us the choice to choose what script we felt would be the first collaborations together um, between Joko Anwar, Vice Studio, and Ghost Studio. Yeah, and it's interesting because when I first brought him up, uh, internationally to everyone about six months ago, you know, you kind of get this interesting yeah. type of thing. And the more people, the world is changing so rapidly in the lens of, the creative lens of the world moving towards Asia in many ways. And certainly lots of uh, companies in this room, obviously big drivers behind why uh, Asia is so exciting and the, the kind of talent being on Earth. He's now sort of front and center for us advice to yeah. be like, okay, how can we do more? How can we work with him globally? Before we talk about that, maybe like what, what's, why are you doing what you're doing? What is, what is your purpose? And I was bored one weekend. <laughs> like, um, what's yeah, the why did, so why did Gojek get into, into the entertainment space? Um, at the core of what Gojek's mission has constantly been is um, speed, innovation, and social impact. And we look at the social impact aspect of popular culture and the entertainment space uh, we see more money moving into uh, Indonesia, but also into Southeast Asia when it comes to entertainment. Uh, we see the opportunity from a Go Studio point of view um, to help the Indonesian um, you know, film and entertainment ecosystem. Right. right? Uh, put more money in the system. Uh, you have the opportunity for more filmmakers to actually tell their stories. Right. You have more screenwriters who are starting to you know, develop things, not necessarily just for broadcast television or feature film, but now there's, you know, more opportunity for episodics, right? So you see a, a, a natural development, but we wanted to, we wanted to kind of um, amplify, you know, or, or uh, speed up the process of development within the Indonesian um, entertainment landscape. And it, it started to make just a lot of sense uh, because we know that, you know, particularly you guys, you know that, you know, popular culture, investigative journalism, you know, turning over rocks out of curiosity really, really propel cultures forward, right? right? Nations forward, using popular culture as a way to open up hearts and minds, right? Yep. Um, and we, we see the same thing. And so that was kind of the initial consideration of you know, how do we work with amazing talent? Right? Um, there's so many stories, so many writers, so many directors in Indonesia that, that really needed additional opportunity. Uh, and so you wanted to get involved in that. So your lens initially is Indonesia and then what? Yeah, I mean, originally it was Indonesia. Uh, and then as we started uh, you know, making deeper connections with people, starting to talk to more filmmakers, uh, more directors, more actors who have scripts in their back pocket, right. right? And not so much just the focus on production houses, which is kind of an easy conversation. They have a thing, you know, they're looking for investment or looking for partnerships, but, but really trying to get to the earliest stages of the development, right? Um, 
But that's now taken us a little bit outside of Indonesia. Um, number one, we've got uh, uh, one of our films um, from uh, Garin, who's an amazing, kind of an OG in the, uh, the writer-director space within Indonesia. Uh, his film, Memories of My Body, uh, was also at Venice, so we were a co-producer on that. Um, and uh, another film, 27 Steps of May, uh, that has now uh, been given a Busan nod, so it'll premiere um, awesome. in Busan. That's another Indonesian film that we've uh, co-produced. And then uh, we were a co-production partner with Buffalo Boys as well, which um, came out uh, with Mike Willen and Infinite Studios. Uh, it had participation with uh, IMDA in Singapore. Um, and it's now been the Singapore's uh, submission into the Academy Awards as a foreign film. Incredible. So right, right away, yep. even though our initial thesis was Indonesian in perspective, now it's sort of how do we get these films and these projects and these writers and directors more visibility and internationally? I made a few good bets early on. Well, congratulations, amazing. It's, yeah, I mean, you know, obviously why we're here is for people to find that out. It's incredible stuff what you're doing. You know, for Vice, I think it's, it's similar in, in many ways, you know, our approach. We have a deeply local approach to every country mm -hmm. we operate in, from the US to Indonesia to Japan to China, wherever we are. It's really local media companies around local talent, local stories. You know, what we're seeing more and more now, of course, is that's super powerful within country, right? And if I look at what we've done over all these years as a company, and me you know, being a part of the company for 12, 13 years uh, in New York, where, where we're headquartered, um, is you really saw that it was global, and global is kind of Western, is kind of American, European maybe, but you know, global. And then there was the individual country, right? And I think young people, um, or talent, or directors, or creators, musicians, anyone uh, really was worried about their own local and then this global, right? The, the tension was between what is happening in America, North America, and Europe, and in my local country. With the West typically leading the consideration. Co correct, right? You right? Would look at something and then you would instantly look to the right or left, yeah. depending on the And where is you were. what I'm doing, how does it compare to? Yeah. That and I think what we're seeing and what, what we're certainly betting on or, or orientating our, ourselves on is a different lens. And you know, we're saying it's a vice Asia, one Asia type of lens mm -hmm. because we believe that a young person right now in China or Indonesia that might be interested in hip hop, let's say, right? These big connective themes that drive a young young person's yeah. life. That person is interested first and foremost in hip hop in their own country, right? This is what they live, they believe 100% this hip hop that comes from their own country is the best. It's the most meaningful, it talks about the issues they care about, yeah. that is it. Yes, there's other hip hop, there's a history, but this is it. We believe rather than just comparing it to the origins, origins of the music from the US, just saying like, I'm interested in what happening, what's happening in their culture yeah. in China, in Korea, in Japan, in Indonesia, and in well, India. Well, they're just looking over the border now. Exactly. Right. And I think there's a big moment going on culturally as the ground is shifting mm -hmm. uh, culturally, where you know we believe the cultural center of gravity in many ways is moving to this side of the world, or the curiosity of what is happening, coupled with the fact that young people have the ability to express themselves, distribute their content, create content, have a voice, gain mm -hmm. massive amounts of confidence in their own culture. Yeah. There's a really interesting thing going on that people, again, now compare themselves to their peers, to their surrounding cultures, and are taking a pride in Asia, where they're from. And to finish that point is, on the other side of the world, you have two constituents also interested in that, right? You have American, European, born Asian or Asian diaspora students all over the world who are looking for an interesting, authentic voice about home, yep. their culture, their origins from this side of the world. And of course, you have anyone at the sort of tip of culture in the rest of the world who's interesting, who's interested in the next, super interested in what is Vice, what is Gojek, what are we doing yeah. in Asia, yep. right? Because 
you know, in the rest of the world, lots of it has been said before. It's very accessible, yeah. um, you know, and if you feel like you, you But the want stories, to, the stories right. that are coming out of Asia, um, and I'm now seeing them firsthand, you know, I used to, yeah, I was curious, but now they're actually coming to me, right? right? One, of the, one of the things that we're doing is we're making sure that we, we put a focus on like experimental in short form in first time voices, right? Just like what you guys are doing. You, you, um, you, know, you might be talking about rap at one point, we might be talking about you know, whether it's food or whether it's identity or whether it's what it means to be Asian or what it means to be Indonesian. Um, we're seeing some really wonderful, like we were just at uh, Docks by the Sea and we saw some great documentaries. We, we screened about 30 projects um, and these are, all, a lot of them are just new voices, right? And people who have something to say, but they don't quite know how to do it. And so we're trying to make sure that we give them an opportunity to, to get these stories out, right? To, you know, particularly these young documentary filmmakers, but not just, not just putting money into the project, but also right. pairing them with like mentors from Europe, mentors from America, kind of, you know, helping them shape their stories. You know, it might be an, an editor from Holland who's won multiple awards in the documentary space, now paired with, um, there's a partnership between Thailand and Indonesia, these two filmmakers. And that really gives us an opportunity to, you know, lift the skill set, you know, have real craftspeople you know, influence that story. And then those stories are naturally crossing the border, um, either through distribution deals or, you know, through, you know, distributed via Vice or distributed via YouTube or whatever the relationships are. It's really been exciting to see. Yeah, and I think that the, you know, from, you know, from my perspective of a global media company coming here, right? Our, I said this a, a year ago. Our point isn't to bring Vice to Asia, right? Yeah. It's creating Vice Asia, creating Vice in each country, and creating something that is native to each of the places and 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 cultures that we operate in. Right. Be it in Asia, be it in the Middle East, be it in Latin, be it, be it in Europe, of course. But the standard isn't so much to say, is what is created in Indonesia as good as, yeah. right? The main thing that to me matters is this the best in Indonesia? Is be. this the best you can possibly do in Indonesia yeah. right now? Because if you do that, the rest of the world will care. Well, and that's the discussion that we're having constantly. When, I think when we first sat around the big table and talked about you know, what could Gojek's uh, impact be in the entertainment space? It, it originally was, how do we raise the bar for Indonesian film, right? Right. Um, now, I think that after talking to film, you know, and that was, that was before we actually talked to anybody. That was just us sitting around the room. But now that we've talked to Indonesian screenwriters and directors and filmmakers and production houses, there's this really strong sense within the community that, that when you talk about what is good, good is no longer just better box office in Indonesia. Right. Good is actually, can it be recognized? Can it be acquired? Can it be distributed um, you know, internationally? Can Indonesian film, particularly in Bahasa Indonesia, actually find audiences? outside of just Indonesians who have, you know, moved to another country, but actually be recognized. And, you know, these, it's been a really good year for us anyway, with the, uh, the few recognitions that we've had at, at the festival level. But now even on the commercial aspect, when we're talking to commercial production houses or commercial directors, um, they're starting to share that ambition as well. Like, how do we, how do we step out, you know, over and outside of the border? And the relationships with different companies, you know, IMDA has, uh, you know, been a, a big supporter already in dialogues, you know, and working with production houses. Um, we're seeing now distribution opportunities, Indonesian story, Indonesian film, Indonesian cast and crew actually right. moving outside of Indonesia with some recognition. It won't be overnight, you know, we're pretty, we're pretty aware of that, but at least, um, I see, I, I see a lot of excitement in that space from the people who are doing the work itself. 
Yeah, I mean, um, on, on the same note, you know, for us, of course, it's, it's, we have a more developed studio business at this point mm. in Europe and the US. It's natural, right? That's where the company has grown uh, the fastest, where we've been around for the longest, we've not grown the fastest, we've been around for the longest. So, but even there where, you know, I think that the view on, on this part of the world, it's, it used to be exotic, Yeah. right? Ooh. Asia, yeah, exotic. It's not, right? It isn't. This is not what it's about. It's like to certainly anyone living here, it's not that, mm. right? And I think what's interesting is, again, people, although you say you want to have approval from, or like the, the nod from a international film festival, that, that is a level, but I think people, generally young people right now are saying like, I just want to make something that I like that matters to me right? Yep. The good thing with it is that there are companies like ourselves, I'm not saying we're the company, there's obviously many in this room that are helping with it, that are kind of helping these voices, this young talent from around the world that would have never been able to be heard on a global yeah. stage, do that, right? And there is a hunger for new talent, there is a, there's an appetite uh, in, in the US and Europe for interesting stories because they exist. And these stories aren't just like, they're crazy stories from Asia. They're oh. great, right? The, the talent level is starting to get to a place where it's super, it's not, super it's interesting. It's not pray love anymore. <laughs> Which yeah. I recently watched when I was in Bali and thought it was the biggest yeah. garbage yeah, I've ever seen. Yeah. But the, um, you know, the, the talent is actually there. Whether young people even know that or not, but it is there. Well, they, they don't recognize it, but what I think that they do recognize is the importance of their own culture. Right. Because some of the scripts that we're getting, even in the past eight months that I've been kind of sitting in that chair, I've, I've seen in the early days, you know, early first few months, there was a lot of uh, project proposals that were like black mirror, but right. for Asia, yeah. right? And, and just kind of lifting the concept of the, you know, the anthological horror thing and sort of painting it with, I guess, Asian colors. That really, shifted quickly as we started to see younger talent actually come in and say, hey, I want to tell a story about, you know, a, you know, a former, you know, fighter or a singer or a boxer or a village, you know, and, and, right. and, it, and going to kind of universal storytelling themes, you know, you've always got the, 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 the genre type stuff, but you always have love, you always have drama, you always have, you know, thrills, you have horror um, that can be woven in universally to pretty much any culture and any story. But the references within the Indonesian culture, particularly around horror, of which Joko has become a master of telling me Indonesian yeah. horror story, right? Um, music, I'm just surprised every day at the treatments that I get to see that have woven in Indonesian music right, into the, like, like integral into the storytelling, which is obviously part of the Indonesian culture as well with the, the puppetry and the dangduk music. And, um, and I'm seeing this shift on the things that are now landing, landing on our desk, that it is very Indonesian focused. Like there's a, there's a pride in, in uh, Indonesian culture um, that I didn't see in the very early stages. Yeah, exactly. I mean, we're, and I'm we, sure it's happening. I'm sure yeah. you're seeing it as you travel to other markets as well, right? Yeah, exactly. I mean, I think it's it's super super interesting to see it even in in the few months I've been here, right? Yeah. Uh, obviously, our our um, brand has has grown uh, over the past few months. So you know, the incoming is gets more and more interesting. The opportunities get more and more interesting yeah. as people learn more about us, how we think it's just everything starts to come in together in a, in a more interesting way. And again, our uh, purpose, what we're trying to do is to help young people, help young creators, creatives, directors, musicians, everyone uh, from this region, uh, from each of the individual countries, to help them find a home just one level up across yeah. Asia, yeah. right? And from there, of course, to find a home uh, across the world. There's very, very few media companies in the world, uh, I would argue, and I don't mean this arrogantly, if I speak to someone in Indonesia tomorrow that I like, 
that I feel like has a home on 40, uh, in 40 different countries that Vice is operating in. Mm. And I say, yes, it's happening. Yeah. He or she is there the next day, right? There isn't uh, this, this crazy decision process through various different layers of the company and all these approvals and, oh, this doesn't really fit. Like, if I believe this is the right thing to do, I can credibly come to that person and say, like, I can have an impact. Yeah. I'm not saying I'm changing your life, but I can have an impact. I can help you get out. And we share that same, you know, kind of belief. And I think that that's why early on when we started working on, you know, again, back to the example of underdog. Right? Right. Was, it, we very quickly came to an agreement on what the story is and what the value of the story is. We were able to test and learn using our combined networks to see, you know, is this story that is, well, is not just interesting to me in that right. sense, but also interesting, you know, out in the market space. And we made sure that we tested against both English and Bahasa Indonesia um, subtitles or English subtitles where we needed it, uh, so we can get a real sense of you know, what are people wanting to watch? Not just willing to watch, which is completely different, right? Um, sometimes you're just, you're willing to watch anything that might be available because you're stuck in traffic in Jakarta for an hour and 20 minutes, right? And, but the ambition I think that we shared was to give people really interesting options within storytelling and things that could potentially inspire them, you know, or move them to the next level in whatever struggles they might be having or aspirations they might be having by, by watching this content that we put together. And so now we're, what are we, seven, eight episodes into yep. finishing off our first season, and it's turning out quite well. Yeah, so I think we're, we're, we're getting to that uh, point of that clock. Point. So, you know, obviously, like, uh, we're at the very beginning. Uh, we had spent a f couple of hours together this morning, very beginning of our relationship. Yep. Um, lots of the things will be announced next year, yep. for next year. Um, so, you know, we are, we're continuing to be super excited about it. I think, again, you're my number one example of, of uh, you know, left field, interesting, massive company that no one in the rest of the world, and I'm now sp speaking rest of the world, really, yeah, downtown Brooklyn, <laughs> which it doesn't mean anything. Right. It's a bubble. But yeah, so people in the tiny bubble of Williamsburg, where our office is, don't know anything what's going on. I use you as the example of, uh, of a super interesting company to do really in interesting thing things with, and I'm hoping to... Uh, announce some of those very soon. Yeah, we will, absolutely. And from the Gojek point of view, I mean, this was not necessarily an obvious direction to take the company in or right. take a portion of the company, right? Um, but now, kind of in hindsight, it makes complete sense after having the conversations with the film community and the writers and with partners like yourself. Um, there's quite a few partners in the room as well uh, that we're already working with just to you know, to be the different, have a different point of view, right? To try to do things that are culturally impactful, but also do them at scale, right. which is really the hardest struggle. And I think that Gojek has really made a name for itself by taking, you know, small problems that we have that are friction-oriented problems, removing friction, and then trying to do that at scale, right? And that's a similar point of view to, to um, you know, kind of why we're working together. Anyway, we've got time to go get a coffee. No, I think we're good. All right. Cool. So, so thank you very much. Thank you. Everyone who came. Thank you.